Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the fifth webinar in the C series of the CS Professional Development webinars designed to promote coding activities and initiatives during BPS Hour of Code. Uh, today's webinar will focus on computing concepts such as iteration, uh, recursive nature conditions, some variables, uh, etc., using the visualizing mathematics curriculum. Learning to think computationally uh, with interdisciplinary alignments um, is the key focus of the visualizing mathematics curriculum. Uh, BPS Visualizing Mathematics Project is very lucky to form partnerships with Michigan State Visualizing Mathematics Team, MIT Math League, Baytech, NSF, um, key curriculum team, and PSJS, which is a processing JS team for their incredible support and guidance. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. My name is Rashmi Pimprakar. I am Program Director for STEAM and Multimedia Initiatives uh, with the Boston Public Schools Digital Learning Team. Uh, welcome again, and please uh, make sure that you are logged into our today's channel um, and our Google Hangouts so that you can see the broadcast for today and also comment or question um, activities as we continue going into the details of the activities. On my right, I have David, uh, and I'm going to le let David introduce himself in just a quick second. Hi, my name's uh, David Kamishlian, and I teach at Brighton High School. Um, and, uh, I think I've, I've been uh, a teacher at Boston Public Schools for, this will be, 13, 13 years. Previously, I was, uh, my first first career was uh, software engineering, and so I had gone to RIT and majored in computer science, and then gotten a graduate degree in, at uh, University of Maryland in artificial intelligence, and had, uh, in a previous life, had programmed for 15 years as a software developer, as a um, principal engineer, and then as a program manager. So I have a, a you could say sort of an ex experience of um, programming and doing software development and, and engineering. And I've, been, and I've taught some graduate level courses in um, computer science also. So I was really um, enthusiastic or pretty excited about using Geometry Sketchpad and looking at other technologies that, um, that uh, my students can use to learn more about uh, um, geometry or just be able to solve problems, be able to visualize um, solutions to problems. The other thing I want to say is, uh, the thing I did last year, sort of an aside, was uh, Hour of Code, and I highly, highly recommend doing Hour of Code. Your kids, uh, kids, students, young adults, I'm in high school, so young adults, my students loved uh, doing that. Like, they couldn't put it down. We did applications that they could download out to their phones and then show um, show their family these games that they had pro programmed. Um, I think the ac activity we did was Angry Birds, but that's my, that's my background. Um, uh, I've taken two of the classes with Rashmi with uh, on Geometry Sketchpad, and we've used the, we use these in class to be able to, uh, instead of doing classical constructions, have the students uh, be up and running and do some things where they can visualize how how to move instead of drawing a uh, a number, doing a number construction, be able to visualize what happens when parallel parallel lines move or when you change angles. Um, are properties still the same or what happens to the properties of either angles or polygons and so on. So, uh, so that's what I hope to uh, convince you that this is a, you know, a great opportunity for you guys to try some of this uh, geometry sketchpad in the classroom, either demonstrate it or have your students uh, work with it. So welcome. Thank you, David. Uh, we share the passion for engineering and for computer science um, together. We come from industry. Um, and having explored the different curriculum options and the tools within visualizing mathematics has been um, a really eye-opening experience. Uh, so for example, we, um, in addition to Geometer Sketchpad, we also look at uh, curriculum options using um, examples uh, with a language called processing, and I'm sharing a quick um, link to that. Uh, this uh, website, really has a lot of information about what processing is, introductory beginner tutorials about um, how to, um, you know, take it to the next level or step-by-step uh, -step lessons about, you know, um, 
exploring geometry, uh, geometry algebraic concepts. Um, you can see that it talks uh, quite a bit about objects, about how to build in interactivity, typography, strings and drawing text, arrays, um, a lot of curves, uh, um, exploration into 2D transformations, and um, you know just the idea of using trigonometric primers or data um, into two-dimensional arrays allows you to explore mathematical concepts in a very visual uh, pattern in a very visual, uh, visually understanding pattern. So this is one um, tool that we highly recommend utilizing in your classrooms as well. Uh, and we'll share these resources again on our Google Classroom. Um, if you haven't already had a chance to log in, please make sure that you are logged in onto the Google Classroom um, and onto the Today's Meet. Today's Meet has um, the links to today's Hangout, the Google Classroom code, um, and the link um, in there. So if you have questions, please post there. Um, in addition to processing, I do want to get back and show you one more really great resource. This is uh, one of the places where you can go for geometry sketchpad resources and activities. You can, of course, buy uh, some of the activity modules, but uh, there is a lot of free instruction material available, which talks a lot about computing within the interdisciplinary field of mathematics as well as scientific field. So please um, do take a chance, uh, do take an opportunity to explore these resources. Um, and before we sort of get started on the, uh, the visualizing mathematics um, activity, which the first activity will be, uh, give me one quick second so that I can open up the software. Uh, um, it will be an animation with uh, the concept of using locus of lines to demonstrate how a parabola is formed. So for all purposes, what we are going to construct right now is this animation, as you're seeing on your screen, which demonstrates um, infinite number of lines being formed um, on this uh, line CD which essentially forms a parabola. So it is a concept that visually appeals to the students and they get an under a thorough understanding of um, how a parabola is formed with the locus of lines uh, without really looking into, you know, uh, as a definition, but it's, it's a visual representation. Um, we are going to construct that as an activity today. So as a first step, give me one quick second. I am going to open up a new sketch in Sketchpad, which looks like this. And I'm going to share that with you so that you can follow along the activity as I do that with you. What you see on your screen right now is the um, as I call the canvas of Sketchpad. Now, Sketchpad is a very mathematically defined software, which also means that it carries on uh, the properties, the mathematical properties, and so you're constructing figures in this property. Uh, the handout for this activity, which is called the Parabola Animation, is, um, of course, included on the Google Classroom. So please um, feel free to download that and practice it. Um, if you if you are able to follow it along with us as we complete the construction, that would be really amazing. But you can always watch the webinar um, after it is recorded, and it will be uh, the link will be emailed to you. So, as a first step, we are going to create a line, um, which is, of course, like so. I am going to label that line A and B. A and B. That's my line AB, and as you can see, it extends infinitely on both sides, which is according to the definition of line. Um, I'm going to draw a point C, which is on the line AB, which is the intersection of line AB. And as you can see, when I move my point towards the line and it intersects that line, you can see that there is a red 
the line turns red. So that's the point, which means there is a mathematical in intersection that's taking place. I place it, and like every mathematical property, you have to label it. So I'm going to label that as C. Um, let's place another point D above the line AB. I said anywhere above the line AB, so I'm going to place it maybe around about here. Again, we label it. So we know our points are labeled and we have line AB with an intersection point C and a point D. Now I'm going to choose point C and point D and go to the construct menu, which is right up top, to construct a segment CD. Now, segment has a finite end, which means it starts at C and ends at D or vice versa. I constructed a segment using the mathematical property of segment, CD. Now, I'm going to choose only segment CD, and I need to construct a midpoint to segment CD, which means I'm going to, again, go back to my construct menu, and I'm going to construct a midpoint. It is very important that we construct a midpoint and not draw a midpoint, which means randomly take the point tool and place a point. Um, it is critical that we use the construct definitions of geometry sketchpad to follow, um, in, in this case, to construct a midpoint of segment CD. Now, it's important, again, to deselect everything, which means I click on the open surface of the sketchpad canvas. Now I'm going to draw a perpendicular line to, uh, I should probably, first thing I should do is label this, which is E, midpoint E. Now I'm going to construct a perpendicular line to segment CD from point E. So I select segment CD, I select point E, I go to the construct menu and I construct a perpendicular line. Um, this, I can also go to my display properties and I can, uh, mm -hmm. I can do a line style to be uh, dashed so that it just gives me a little bit of um, excitement when I actually make, uh, when I do the animation. Um, now, we, by choosing the line through point E, um, I'm just going to choose a perpendicular line and I'm going to go to display and again say trace perpendicular line. Just to check on my construction, what I'm going to do is take this perpendicular line and I'm going to try to drag it like so, which means it is moving around the screen and it is tracing that screen. I can clean that up quickly like that. But we are going to now try to animate point C such that, quick second, command shift E. I need to move this line like this, right, David? We are going to try to animate the point such that this is what it looks like. So we have our A, we have our midpoint, and we have our perpendicular line. And I'm just going to manually drag my point B so that you can see that it's still forming the locus of lines, which is what our parabola intends to do. Um, so here is the infinite construction of those lines, which allows me to get to that animated parabola. Do the students have to draw those infinite lines? No. Um, this is a really great way of showcasing how um, a computing concept, like iterating over and over again in finite number of times, allows you to build a structure that would be harder to build otherwise. Uh, there is also, I can animate the point B, right here, and I have already done so. Uh, you can see the properties of animation um, right in here. 
I don't know whether you can because I have to select the screen. So it, it, the property of animation basically allows me to do the animation of point B from on line segment AB, the way we have constructed and then I animate it. It automatically does the work, which is um, constructing that locus of line, uh, which ultimately gives me the parabola. Um, it's a really great um, activity to explore while, with your students, uh, to explore the um, you know, uh, different tools and features of Geometer Sketchpad, uh, but it also allows you to see the power of Sketchpad in terms of how um, a problem that can be infinitesimally long can then be extended to something that students enjoy, can experience visually, and can understand the concept. I'm going to stop the animation. Um, and just sort of reiterating the fact uh, that the key objective of visualizing mathematics project is to focus on creating uh, standards-based aligned lesson plans that identify significant dynamic visualization and exploration opportunities. So when I say that, um, there's one more activity I would love to quickly showcase. This is a Pythagorean tree, and a lot of the students have seen, um, have worked with the Pythagorean tree um, in some shape or form. They have looked at the, the formula, they have derived the formula, they've played with it. Um, they've definitely plugged in values to, um, to look at the Pythagorean tree. But here is an animation that really gets them going, which they get to construct. Um, and is an amazing visual of what a Pythagorean tree looks like. Um, again, I, I really want to emphasize how visualizing mathematics allows you to identify significant dynamic visualization and exploration opportunities uniquely suited to uh, the dynamic features of these softwares that we mentioned. Uh, once again, do explore Sketchpad, processing, uh, Scratch. You have SketchUp, Star Logo, Nova, um, and the curriculum expands for K-12. So um, please do take, an, take the chance and the opportunity and the time to explore this curriculum. Without further ado, I'm going to stop this wonderful animation. And I'm going to switch, to, um, switch over the camera to David, who is going to share um, an amazing activity. David teaches um, this. Uh, significantly so he'll be able to explain um, the transversals and the exterior angle theorems with you so can you give us a quick second before we transfer okay so i have uh two activities that uh developed for my class i teach geometry this year um i taught algebra two algebra one and so on but um these two activities um i find it really help help my students understand um some properties of of uh, lines cut by transversal, that'll be the first activity I do. And then um, the second activity is a sum of, it's what's sort of nice what we're doing right now is a sum of, uh, looking at polygons, but particularly convex polygons. And um, it's one way of teaching, uh, teaching that the sum of the exterior angles of a convex polygon is to say, oh, the sum is 360 degrees. Another way is to uh, have the students experiment and construct polygons, but do it um, quickly and do different ones um, with Geometry Sketchpad and then see what the sum of the angles are. And notice that, oh, no matter how I change the angles, as long as it's still a convex polygon, the angles add up to 360. So that's the two activities that I'm going to do. Um, apologies in advance if this is sort of clunky because this is my very first time ever doing one of these webinar things. So uh, I'm going to pull up the first uh, activity. Okay, so the first one I'd like to do is, uh, uh, this one is uh, lines cut by a transversal. And this is um, t typically an activity that uh, is useful because uh, as the transition, as the students go from eighth grade, it's not really taught explicitly in um, eighth grade. And then um, there's definitely questions on MCAS and not that it's driven strictly by tests or anything, but um, uh, this is sort of a nice way of of showing students uh, the pro how how this works, how um, lines cut by transverse transversal work, and so on. So, if you notice, I have um, I'm going to use the pointer uh, here, and um, 
And so I had two parallel lines, which I, I constructed. I made one line when I started off doing this. And uh, in the interest of time, I won't do this one. I won't construct this one. Uh, but uh, like uh, you can make, do two points and you do um, a line and you pick a point on the line and say, I'm going to make another parallel line. So I made, I made the line B, um, BD, and then I made the line that's parallel uh, um, EG. And then I just picked a point on the, on the top line and I said, I want to make another line that cuts across both of these. And then uh, I labeled all of these, all of these points. And if you can see here, um, these little arcs here are um, denote the angles. And you use the uh, pointer, the drawing tool here, if you want to um, denote an angle. And I'll, I'll show you that with the polygons, but you show angles here. And if you notice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. And so um, just for the purpose of the demonstration here, I listed when I, you can sort of see that I listed all these angles. Uh, Angle BCA, here's uh, BC, BCA right here. Uh, and if you notice, DCF is DCF is the vertical angle, so it should be equal. I listed these off just in the interest of showing you what's going what's gonna to be equal. So vertical angles will be equal. Um, uh, corresponding angles will be equal. So A, C, B, and um, let's see, C, F, E should be equal, and so on. I'm sort of ruining the surprise here, but what's sort of really nice about this is, is that you can drag whatever you want to drag. So if I drag this, if you notice, the lines still remain par parallel, but I'm changing the angle of the transversal. But um, the first four angles are all equal, which means that the corresponding angles are equal. The alternate exterior angles are still equal. The vertical angles are still equal. So I can change the angle here by changing the transversal. Another uh, Another thing that's sort of neat about this is that um, almost always we teach this with the with the uh, parallel lines almost horizontal. Well, we can switch this to where I can change um, where my where my parallel lines are. And if you notice, the angles still stay still stay the same still stay the same. Um, well, the angles change, but the relationship between the vertical angles, the corresponding angles, alternate interior alternate exterior angles are still equal. So um, this was sort of a nice activity that um, uh, shows the students and they can see what changes and they can say, well, um, you don't have to draw many angles and they can play, play around with um, dragging the parallel lines and so on. So uh, this was one activity that I had done with uh, lines cut by transversal that's um, directly, uh, it's directly applicable to what we've been doing in, in class and so on. Um, so that's my first activity. This is where we're going to end up, but I think I have enough time to for us to do this all. So why don't I, do I have enough time to just make one? Okay. Okay. So uh, let's pretend that's not there. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a polygon, but I'm going to use all rays to draw a polygon. So I've selected a ray. And I'll just, what's really nice is I just pick two points and I'm done. And I'm going to start the next side from the second point. So I'll just do from there to here, from here to here, from here to here. Um, and see how I, when I move over the point, um, it highlights here. And well, we'll connect it here. Okay. So I've made my polygon, and what's kind of nice about this is, um, well, first let me label the points so I can take my little um, labeler and just click on the points. K, L, M, N, and O. Right. Um, so remember, this activity I want to demonstrate, and the students could do, you can see how quick this was, the students can make uh, more sides if they want. I just chose to do this one in the interest of time. Uh, what I want to do now is label the angles. And I mentioned we can use this pen tool and sort of think of it as you're drawing an arc. So you see the arc there. And I'm, notice I'm labeling all the, um, uh, marking all the uh, angles that are exterior to the polygon. And as you can see, as I label this, I'm getting another point here because it really wants, uh, Geometry Sketchpad really wants three points for every angle, right? Um, so now I have all my angles. Um, and what I'd like to do is measure all these angles. So I'll go back up here to my pointer and I'll uh, select each one of the angles. And you can see that it's selected. 
notice that this line selected because it's red and I don't want to select the line. I just want to select the angle. So I have angle and angle and ang angle. Well, I don't want this line. So I'm going to click it again and angle and angle here and angle here. If your angles are very small, you can, um, you can pick three points to measure it. So um, I'd like to measure all these angles. So I'm going to go up here to measure and I'm going to say measure the and so I want to uh, measure the angles here. So I'm going to measure. And here it gives me all my angles. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six angles. Um, and now we'd like to um, show that this sum is going to be 360 degrees, or that's what, or we want to figure out what the sum is. So uh, what Geometry Sketchpad is, is, it has this thing, this nice thing called a uh, number where you can do a calculation. And it comes up with a little um, calculator. What's really nice about this is, is that I can just click one of these things that I have computed, and it's going to throw it right in my calculator. So I want to figure out the sum. So I'm going to take the first angle plus the second angle plus the third angle plus the fourth angle plus the fifth angle plus the sixth angle. I'm going to say OK. Well, maybe it's a coincidence. We just got 360 degrees, but here's what we um, here's what we have. So we added all these angles. Now, what's really cool, what's really neat about this is now I can drag these points. And if you notice, up in the top left of your screen, angles are changing, but the sum still stays at 360 degrees. Now, uh, if you're teaching this, uh, the one thing you need to be aware of is that as you make it con concave. Angles are not going to add up to 360. But if I move it out, if I stretch it further out, and so on, it doesn't matter. It's always 360 60 degrees. Um, so it's really a nice way of doing this. And these can be as, as complicated as you want. You could make a, 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 a decagon, which is 10 sides. I used to know the, number, number, the name for a 12 sided figure, but you can make these as complicated as you want. Uh, and so it it really gives the students uh, an ability. You would see it didn't take me much time to draw this and then to be able to add these all up and to see the whole different, different shapes that have the same, same property, which is sort of a, not sort of, which is a nice thing is why I teach geometry is that really I think it's different than algebra in that you're really looking for invariance. What do you do to shapes? What stays the same? Uh, what's, what's invariant and what, what can vary if you change like the relationship of sides, relationships of angles, and so on. Um, so that's pretty much it for uh, the second, yeah, the second dem demonstration. The question is focused more on, on the lines of um, you've been a computer scientist, you've been an engineer in the industry, and how do you see the relevance of that um, and how, how important it is for our students today to learn about computer science in schools and how early can they start? In terms of our, our students, I think everything, I mean, I teach an expo um, exploring computer science class. And the main reason why I teach it is that um, no matter what a student is going to do uh, in the future, in some way, shape, or form, they're going to be using computers. And so, um, uh, they don't have to be able to program a computer. They don't, but uh, any kind of job right now is going to have some sort of automation to where people need to understand, or students, if, if they're going to be successful in the future, they need to be able to understand what a computer does. How do you interact with it? How do you? Um, how can you get it to do things? What are the capabilities of it? Um, uh, and so on. And so. Um, uh, there's so many applications right now, and, and I guess the other thing I would say is from um, uh, from being com doing computer science, and, and this is sort of hard from a, a mathematics standpoint, is um, usually I'll get the question from my students is, how, uh, when are we ever going to use this? Like we're in geometry, if we're in um, algebra 2, and, I, and, I'll, and they'll say, when, are you gonna ever, when am I ever going to have to figure out if, if this is a parabola or not, if this is a quadratic relationship, for, for example, and so on. And... Um, I usually will say, you know, I'm an, I'll say, well, not usually, I'll say that I'm an engineer and you know what, a lot of the programming I did was mathematics uh, to figure out, um, figure out if there's certain things in the images and so on in artificial intelligence. And I didn't use any of the math that I learned. But the one thing that mathematics taught me and sort of as an aside is that 
um, it helped me how to problem solve, like how to figure out solutions to problems. And I said that this is really uh, a major thing of what you're going to learn in, in math. And I think in computer science, it's also the same same thing. You're going to no matter what job you do, if it's it's a reasonable job that you're going to support yourself with, that you're going to need experience in, in understanding what computers can do, how to how to uh, program computers, what the capabilities are, and and um, whether or not something is giving you say a reasonable answer and what what in terms of what you how you're using a computer. So uh, uh, that in itself um, is what I, uh, I will talk to my students about, but um, but. That's sort of like the the lower bound or the least common thing. Um, from there, you can sort of think about that it's a really a creative process. It gives students a way of 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 doing things, be it um, creating a uh, a website or creating a program, like with Scratch. Uh, Rashmi mentioned Scratch, and that's what we're doing right now in uh, exploring computer science. And um, the really cool thing um, and the really bonus for our students now is that there's these environments like Scratch where as you do, as you do uh, uh, write your program, you can see exactly what's executed. And when I wrote programs and when we teach programming and when the program was taught in the past, you had to run, compile your program. You sort of had to figure out um, what's wrong with it. It would tell you what's wrong. And then, and then after everything worked, you could run your program and see what the results are. Right now, our students have the ability to um, use these pieces within Scratch and with Star Logo, where they can put p pieces together and see instantly um, what it means to uh, to think logically, or instantly what it means to to organize your code and to be able to problem solve and be able to think about what it means to um, iterate through um, through a process and so on. So um, I think I mean that's that's like they have this ability and, and this all this is free and available and and um, if you have Chromebooks or if you have, uh, um, uh, you don't even need computers. If you had Chromebooks, um, you could do this. And that's the way I'm doing my class for uh, exploring computer science. But um, I guess to go back to my background is that um, uh, a lot of what they're learning now um, comes into play in, in many other jobs besides engineering. Although I will say the most excited I get is I have a student now uh, who was at Brighton. I was still at Brighton, but she was a freshman when my my when I was uh, my first year at Brighton, and, and now she's a senior, and she's going to be in, she's going to uh, Purdue University, and she's going to be um, she wants to be a biomedical engineer. But I mean, I'm really excited. Like I really excited that other students are going to have opportunity to be able to be engineers and uh, um, and to be able to experience that creativity and be challenged. So I think any any opportunity we give our students for things with computers to just to expose them and say, hey, this is what you can be doing. Um, I know some some founders, I think the founder of um, Facebook has said computer language is going to be the language of the future. And that's really what you need to think about possibly as uh, as being uh, understanding that everything is going to be using computers in some way, shape or form. Absolutely, David, you did um, answer the question and more. Um, it is it is incredibly important that our students are involved in computer science, in computational thinking activities, reading and writing. It's as critical as that. Um, to that end, we want to share some quick resources um, and also some ideas about how you can involve your students into different computing activities. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is a quick graphic of what are the different um, activities that are happening in um, BPS and of course worldwide, um, but specifically BPS in the pre-K to high school spectrum. We have a range of courses and uh, units and activities ranging from BBOTS to keyboard robotics from in the pre-K elementary area to uh, you know the Lego robotics, HTML, um, computing with visualizing mathematics, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, a lot of scratch activities within ECS, which is exploring computer science. Um, exploring computer science, as David mentioned, is being offered in um, upwards of 15 schools this year. And um, 
it's a really great curriculum. We've had a um, webinar about that as well. So if you are interested, please do uh, connect with us, log on to our BPS, our of code website, and get more information about it. But in, in a gist, it's, it's, a, it's a curriculum um, that is um, developed with NSF, with Baytech, um, and it's a really amazing uh, way of introducing students uh, uh, from ninth grade onwards to the computing concepts. Um, we've also done a webinar with Game Simulation with Star Logo, which is another MIT Media Lab software which talks about game programming. So that's a great way of introducing your students, getting them in, excited and interested in uh, computing activities. Uh, the Python, APCS, and uh, again, exploring computer science are courses that are either semester long or year long that you can offer and we have um, professional developments that are being offered uh, within BPS uh, during the school year and definitely during summer for these courses. Um, having said that, we also want to take you to the Hour of Code website, which is the global Hour of Code website. It's a global movement, which is rightfully reaching tens and millions of students across 180 plus countries. Uh, please do get um, involved in it. Our BPS Hour of Code, we have, a, uh, we have a website, and I'm going to, in a second, show you that website. Please assign the pledge to receive more info, but at the same time, we are also going to talk about the competitions, the student competitions, the raffles, and the prizes that are upcoming for the Hour of Code week, which is from December 7th to December 11th. Um, let me quickly switch to our BPS Hour of Code website. Please do take the pledge. This is um, a great, great opportunity to involve your students. Again, uh, we have over 50 plus schools participating in BPS Hour of Code. Do take the pledge and I'm going to take you to the contest and the raffles page, which is exciting for the students. Uh, we have the Scratch 10 Block con Contest, Scratch Game Challenge, Web Design Challenge, App Game Challenge, um, the Computing with Visualizing Math Challenge, uh, Flash Animation, Game Programming, as well as um, um, everything else video challenge, which allows you to engage your students in many different activities. Uh, please visit the site. Please take a look at these challenges and submit um, the activities that you come up with. You have up until December 7th. The submissions open up on December 7th and go on up until December 11th. Um, again, we have really amazing um, sponsors who are helping make this happen. Um, and you are the reason why this is happening. So please do, um, do get involved with the Hour of Code. Um, in addition to BPS Hour of Code, if you uh, register on to the Hour of Code global site, every educator gets a $10 certificate, um, $10 uh, certificate to Amazon, gift certificate, as well as you know certificate for your students and please do advocate at your school and get involved in, um, in large numbers as a whole school um, championing the cause of computer science. Before we just have five minutes more, so I'm going to quickly switch back to our Google Classroom, which will allow you to see the resources that we've posted. And um, while we do that, we also have uh, a really important note to address and um, that's about you know making sure that you have um, obviously pledged you have all the uh, the details that we we hope to give you with the uh, with the webinar in terms of the resources but here is a quick update on the processing website that we talked about earlier which which gives you insight into the different activities that one can do while on, you know, while being active in the uh, using a programming language that allows you to look at concepts such as interactivity, arrays, trigonometric primers, networks, and in you know even simple 
um, concepts, which, you know, sort of the anatomy of a program and how one can build that program. So uh, without further ado, give me one quick second and I'm going to switch to the Google Classroom, which will also give you a purview of the exit pass that we need so that we can have some more information um, regarding your classroom. And if you need information um, about how to install Sketchpad or how to um, interact with processing, with uh, Star Logo Nova, or um, just being able to, one quick second. This is our computing with visualization classroom, where in, um, you can see that, that today's webinar, we have our, um, the today's meet, uh, you know, the chat and all the resources up here. And I will, of course, post the transcript of our chat so you can see. Uh, but at the same time, what I want you to focus on is um, these activities that we did today are also hosted here. And then at the end, you have um, the BPS Hour code site, the, the code.org, uh, the tutorials that I talked to you about with regards to processing. Um, and of course, the home for Geometer Sketchpad Resource Center, wherein you can find more activities. Um, quickly, we are also going to take a look at the exit pass, which is right here. Within this, we just hope to gain more understanding of how you want to implement visualizing mathematics in your classroom and if you need any support. So please do give us feedback about the webinar, about what activities would you would like to implement with your classroom, um, and we can take it from there. Um, any questions, we look forward to um, hearing from you. And if you have questions, please do post on today's meet. David, I'm going to quickly switch to you. OK, well, there, yeah, there was just uh, real quickly. Um... I highly, highly recommend the hour of code. Um, it's not an exaggeration to say that you're going to have to take the Chromebooks away from the students at the end of the activity. Um, it was phenomenal in terms of how much my students enjoyed it, and that was high school. But um, don't be afraid of trying something because the the global website has a bunch of different activities and their grade level. Um, they're done diff different grade levels, so if you're in a it, you know, a K to eight, uh, first grade or second grade, there's activities that um, first graders can do, second graders can do, um, and so on. And they're really set up uh, nicely, and the kids and the students uh, love doing them. The other thing I, I just want to say is the uh, Rashmi was talking about the exploring computer science. And um, I really feel that uh, it's a great course for students to take. Um, uh, in terms of uh, being a computer science major, it gives somebody a flavor of what it means to be do computer science. It's not just programming, it's architecture, it's uh, data visualization, it's uh, understanding what, um, what it means to do, uh, be involved with computers, it's robotics programming, it's web design, it's problem, problem solving. So it's a broad range of, uh, like a survey of, of giving your students a chance to say, hey, this is what I, I think, this is what um, computer science is about, so. Um, thank you for uh, being patient with me, and I hope uh, you've got something out of the uh, presentations today. Thank you again. Um, this is us signing out, but please do post if you have any questions in today's meet. Um, the link is posted. Um, have a great evening. Thank you.